Virtual reality has become very popular in the last few years. With options like the MetaQuest line, VR has become an everyday item for many and it's never been cheaper to jump into a fully immersive VR and play your favorite games and social experiences with friends, right? Or was there a time when there was an even cheaper option on the market? A line of VR headsets that you could buy for just $200 brand new and experience immersive VR for the first time? Back in the days when the Rift and Vive were battling to be the best VR headset for consumers, a new option entered the market which really shook things up. The Windows Mixed Reality line of VR headsets came into the market in October of 2017 and ended up sparking a whole new generation of users to a niche that seemed too expensive for many to enter. I've been a big fan of the idea of VR for most of my life, but it really seemed like a reality when Oculus first started making the waves with the Kickstarter with the original Oculus dev kit. The DK1 made its rounds on YouTube in 2013, and by the time that the DK2 came around, I was sold on it. I saved up, and with some help covering part of the cost, I bought the Oculus DK2. Even with my cheap laptop at the time, I was just so excited to finally have some sort of VR to experience for myself. When the Oculus Rift consumer version came out in 2015, I wasn't able to afford it at that time, so I kept using my old DK2 up through until 2018. Even when I discovered a little game called VR Chat in late 2017, I still used the DK2 and played VR Chat just with an Xbox controller, and that was that. While I was happy to have just some form of VR, most people by that time were using an Oculus Rift or a Vive and experiencing full room scale VR with motion controls. I wanted that so much, still out of my price range, and I also wasn't quite sure that my computer would even be able to run those headsets. So while I was busy trying to save up and decide what type of headset I should get, a new line of headsets entered the market, and to be honest, they really didn't seem all that appealing. Windows had a deal with various manufacturers to build VR headsets to their spec, which would then run on Windows natively. These WMR headsets seemed like they were in an awkward spot. They had higher resolution than the Rift and Vive, but they used LCD panels instead of OLED panels, and their method of tracking was this new thing called inside-out tracking, where the controllers and headset position were tracked by cameras on the headset rather than external cameras or base stations like the Rift or Vive. VR enthusiasts at the time felt like this tracking method was a gimmick that would never really catch on. <laughs> These WMR headsets were built cheaply, felt very light, and lacked features like IPD adjustment, and overall didn't seem as impressive as the established brands. Especially not when at launch they cost the same or even more than a new riff at the time at around $500. It just didn't really make any sense to buy one. That is, until two things happened in January of 2018. VR chat got extremely popular overnight. You don't know the way. Do you know the way? You have to have a bulla to know the way. And the prices of many WMR headsets got cut in half, and at times went on sale as low as $150. On top of that, WMR headsets had lower minimum specs than the Rift or Vive, being even able to run on integrated graphics when switching from the 90Hz mode down to 60Hz mode. From that point on, the cheap WMR headsets became very popular and introduced many to VR for the first time. The Lenovo Explorer, when it was about $200, became my first upgrade from the old DK2, and I loved it the whole time that I used it. These early WMR headsets were bare bones, which fit with their new price point. Using LCD, lacking IPD adjustment, having no built-in microphones or headphones, and just using the visible LED lights on rings for the headset cameras to track seemed like cost-cutting measures that now made more sense with their new low price. And a lot of creators and new users jumped onto these headsets as the best value entry into VR. Windows MR VR headsets are incredibly cheap right now. You can get them off of Amazon for $200, and that's new, including the controllers. You can see the Windows Mixed Reality controllers represent properly with their own little digital uh, avatars. And it's not the best tracking ever, but who cares? For $200, finally, the VR is getting something like that you can touch, and that's a jump you have to do. I couldn't decide between the Oculus or the Vive. It was just so many options. And then these Windows Mixed Reality headsets came in. I was going to get the Oculus. I was probably about a week away from getting it. And then the Lenovo Explorer went and dropped their price to $200 US or $250 in Canada. And at that moment, I just went straight ahead and bought it. And to be honest, I'm actually really happy I did. As you can imagine, Early inside-out tracking with just two front-facing cameras wasn't the greatest quality. 
The controllers would lose tracking easily when you put them at your side or behind you, and each controller ate up two AA batteries in a matter of hours. But even with all that, the setup allowed for an easy solution to hop onto VR with minimal hassle. And once you were immersed in game, tracking hiccups became less noticeable, and you'd subconsciously just adapt to play within the limits of the tracking of the controllers. The biggest issue though, especially now going back and trying those old WMR headsets, are the optics, which are pretty important in a VR device. With current gen lenses like pancake lenses, aspheric lenses, or even more modern for now lenses in VR, I'm now much more used to looking around the view when in VR, whereas with WMR it's a lot better to just keep looking straight forward and turn your head when you want to look around. The lenses had a very small sweet spot and would get blurry quickly as you looked off to the edges of the lenses. This was also amplified by the lack of an IPD adjustment, so unless you had the perfect fit, it's probably likely that at least one eye could be blurry part of the time. But with all that said, I still look back at the WMR times fondly. I had many great experiences using it, and I know many others did as well. WMR is now discontinued, and the software isn't being supported on new versions of Windows anymore. But I do think that it did have its place and its time, and that it really did help boost VR adoption or bring in a lot of new users due to its low entry level price. I almost wish that there was something bare bones now that you could buy at the same price of about $200 brand new. Something that would be just an easy entry level into VR that would run on most people's computers. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see. VR has advanced a lot in recent years, and while I love the things that we have now, I'll still always look back fondly at the times of WMR and what those simple headsets were able to introduce me to.